All right, welcome to Photoshop for Photographers. And today we're gonna to take a look at my organizational process when saving photos. Now this process is very helpful to a working photographer. This video is gonna be very helpful. A lot of times you have to find files and they get stuff reprinted. And this is gonna show you exactly what the file is gonna be like without ever having to open it up. So I'm gonna walk you through my organizational uh, saving process here in Photoshop. Now I have this image. We're just gonna give it some random adjustment layers and we're gonna assume that I've toned this image and that it's ready to go. It's how I want it to go, be. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go ahead, I'm gonna hit Command Shift S. I'll just do this for the first time, which is Save As, and there's my Command Shift S or Control Shift S on a PC. And that's just gonna bring up the Save As dialog box. And the first thing that you can do is I'm gonna save my working file. What I mean by working file is that I've toned this image, but I have not sized or done anything to it. I wanna keep these layers because if I need to go back and adjust these layers in the future, I want them to still be there. I always save my working file. I always shoot raw. Now these photos are JPEGs. I just got them off the internet because this way that you guys can download these files. But just assume that my normal files would be raw. You can't overwrite a raw file. So you have to save it as something completely different. So we're gonna do the Command Shift S and bring this up. And I'm gonna switch this to a PSD file. The only two file types that are supported with layers are Photoshop and TIFF, basically. So we wanna save either as a Photoshop or a TIFF. Since I use TIFF for files to go to print, I want a different file format so I can differentiate between the two. The next thing you need to decide to do is do you wanna save these into a folder within this folder so our folder is called saving files. You should have the date on there. Definitely follow the process that I went through the ingest import process. We can save the PSD files straight into here. And truthfully, most of the time I do because I can search by kind and easily bring up just my PSD files. But in this case, I think it's gonna be simple for new people to go ahead and create a new folder and just call this toned. So I will call this toned. You can call finished ready for print, whatever you wanna call it. It doesn't matter what the name is, it just matters that it's there. So we're gonna hit toned, and now we're gonna save this file in there. I don't need to change the file name or anything. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save, and that file is gonna be saved in there. Now, we're gonna assume that this customer wants this printed five by seven. Remember, we haven't sized or done anything to this image. So what we need to do is come in here to the crop tool, and notice I have five by seven selected in my ratio. Well, there's two ways to do this. We can either crop with the ratio and then resize, or we can come in here and do width, height, and resolution. So I'm gonna do it the slower way first. So we're gonna do five by seven. This is changing it to the correct ratio. Right now, this image is not in the correct ratio. So we're gonna go ahead and I'll say that that crop looks good and I'll apply that. Now our image has the correct ratio and we can go into image size, and you can see the image size is kind of this whacked out 72 DPI thing that doesn't make any sense. So I'm gonna change this to a seven. Now it's automatically changing that to a five because I have this little linked button set here, and I've already changed the ratio, so the ratio is gonna be correct. I wanna print at 300 pixels per inch, now it just kind of depends on where you're getting it printed or what you're doing, but normally 300 pixels per inch is basically the standard in the field. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that. You can see this is now gonna be a nine megabyte file instead of 27. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that. And just like that, it's crop that image and size it. So now when I send this to a printer, they'll know exactly what it needs to be because it's already been resized. Now, we need to sharpen our image. So most images, because they have low pass filters, need to be sharpened. Now, if you were to just sharpen this image now, you'd be sharpening this adjustment layer, and that would not be helpful. You always need to select the image layer to sharpen it. 
However, since we're gonna save this out, we don't really need the layers anymore because it's already been toned. So if you want, you can flatten your image. Now this is sort of a tedious process. So the next video, I'm gonna show you how to automate some of this within an action. So we flatten the image and now we only have this main layer. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna go to filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. This is just an easy basic filter. So we're gonna go ahead, sharpen that image, and now we're ready to go. So we're gonna save this file out. So I'm gonna do the Command Shift S again. And we've brought up our toned file. Here's our PSD. But now we're gonna change this to a TIFF file format. Cause I wanna save my images that have been sized in a different format. TIFF is gonna show me that it's now a TIFF file. But what it doesn't really tell me is what the image size is. And this is where opening something up like a year later and having what I'm going to show you is really important because you're not going to remember if you sized it to eight by 10 or five by seven or four by six, you'll have no idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and put an underscore and then I'm going to do five X seven and then TIFF. So this is showing me that it's been saved or sized to five by seven. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit save and we're gonna do none, interleaved, and Macintosh, since I'm working on a Mac, and we're good to go. So if I come up to my finder, so here is our folder, and inside that folder are those two images. Now when I see this, I know, hey, this has been sized to five by seven. I could come in here and do the same thing, and this time I'm gonna do this the opposite way. So we're gonna come in here, this way's a little quicker, so we're gonna do width, height, and resolution. So I'm gonna change this first one to six, and you need to identify inches when you do this. So four inches, because it won't know whether it should be pixels or inches. And then we're gonna do 300. In this case, it's gonna be six inches by four inches at 300 DPI. We're gonna flip this so it's the correct way. Now we have changed the ratio again. Notice we're losing part of it. And now we're gonna apply this crop. This will change the ratio and resize it at the same time. When I apply that, now this is four by six. So if I come in here to image size, you'll see it's already four by six at 300. So we don't need to do that step. And then I'm gonna come in here and save as once again, it's still gonna go right back into that last folder, but this time I can come in and do four by six. And notice we still have the TIFF extension, so we know it's for print. So this one I'm gonna know is gonna be four by six. And now you can see we have a four by six and a five by seven. So if I ever come back and I need to get a four by six printed, I know to send that file. And if I ever need a five by seven, I can use this file. And if I need to do an eight by 10, I'm gonna have to open up this raw PSD file because I'm gonna need to resize the image. Really, really easy. And we're gonna do one more thing that's a little bit different. My lab actually doesn't accept TIFF files, and you'll run into this, that a lot of offset presses use TIFF in PDF. However, a lot of photography labs use JPEGs. Well, why? Because their servers would not be able to handle hundreds of thousands of TIFF files being sent in, so they want JPEGs. My lab actually does not want the color profile that I use. I use the Adobe 98 color profile, and a lot of photographers use it because it has a larger color gamut. However, they don't like the sRGB because they say it grays the face too much in the way that they print. So they want an sRGB. So the first thing I would need to do for this lab is convert and change this color profile. Now this is really easy to do. You're gonna come up up here and go to edit and you're gonna go down to convert to profile. And that shows you right here that your source space that it's in right now is this Adobe, and we wanna go to sRGB. So I can go ahead and hit okay. And now when I save this file out, so I'm gonna go file save as, you can see down here, now it's gonna edit or embed the sRGB color profile. But remember, they don't want a TIFF file, so I need to change this to JPEG. Now I'm gonna still leave this at four by six, because that's telling me that this image is saved for four by six. And then I can just go ahead and hit save. I use quality large when I'm going to print and then hit okay. And if we come up here, we'll notice now we have this JPEG as well. 
and it's four by six. The difference comes when you wanna save something for the web. So we're gonna take this image and we're gonna say that we need to fit this image and have this long dimension be 1000 pixels. This does not need to be anything specific, but the height needs to be 1000 pixels. The reason pixels is because everything on the web is pixel based. If you ever hear anything size for the web at 72 DPI, that's just a misnomer. That's not correct information. You need to know the exact pixel size. So we're gonna go up here to image size, and then I'm gonna change this to pixels because I need pixel size. Now I said a thousand, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a thousand. Your resolution doesn't matter because pixel size is set or fixed. It's gonna be literally a thousand pixels high. Doesn't matter if you have this at 300, one, one million. A thousand pixels is a thousand pixels. And so the width is gonna be 667. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now, one thing you have to remember, when you save stuff for the web, it does need to be in sRGB. That's the color profile used on the web. However, we've already changed it at, to sRGB, so we don't need to come up here and go edit, convert to profile, because our profile already is sRGB, so we don't need to convert it. But if you were saving for the web, you would need to convert it. And all these steps are really where using an action where you just click one button and everything happens automatically is really gonna help you out. I know it seems sort of a tedious process, but just because it's tedious, this is kind of what's happening. And then I'm gonna show you how to automate it after this. So now we've got it a thousand pixels and we're gonna save it. And we're gonna go to file once again, save as. And so remember, we already have this image as a JPEG. Well, how am I gonna know that this is for print and this is for the web, because they're both gonna be JPEGs, and this is really, really easy. We're gonna change four by six to 1000 P, standing for 1000 pixels. Now, if I needed to have the exact dimensions, I could put, um, I forget what it was, 663 or 667, but it doesn't matter. You would put that exact dimension in there, so we now know it's 1000 by 663 or seven pixels, and then we would just hit save and okay. Now, saving for the web matters. The smaller the file size, the faster your image is gonna load. If you wanted to bump this down to seven or 10 or something else, you're gonna lose image quality, but your file size is gonna load quicker. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay. I use a process called JPEG Mini. So we'll click on JPEG mini. It's a compression program. So I'm gonna save this file with JPEG mini. And we're just gonna call this JPEG mini. And we're gonna save this into the same file and hit save. And then we'll come up here. We have that file and we're looking for 1000 pixels. So notice that that 1000 pixel file was 202 kilobytes. And when I use JPEG mini, it's only 155 kilobytes. So it's reduced the size by a quarter or 25%. It's much smaller, but JPEG mini retains the image quality when doing this. It's an actual fabulous program. Now, normally I would still label that as 1000 pixels just like this, but just so you could see the difference. All right, so let's go over to our, our second image. So we have this second image that we have here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this history panel over here so we can see this history. And then I'm going to click an action. And I'll just bring this over here for a second so you can see it. So I have all these actions. I'm gonna hit this vertical social media. So I'm just gonna click this action and then boom, just like that, it's done. So you can see it did the image size, it did the sharpen and it did the converted profile. So this is what we're gonna be going over in our next video is how to create an action to automate the process so you don't have to go through all those single steps. Now, all I have to do is go file, save as. I'm gonna just reduce this file name so it's easier so we can see it. We'll just do woman. And then I will do the underscore. And this is 2024 pixels. And then we're gonna go ahead and save this as a JPEG. And so I would just hit save and then and right here, save. Normally I would use JPEG mini, 
but you get what I'm going after. So we've done the whole process. That's what I just did quickly using an action inside of Photoshop. So in this case, I did the exact same thing as I did before. I just automated everything with an action inside of Photoshop. Hopefully you learned a little bit about saving files and how to organize yourself. If you have any comments or questions, please leave those below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe down below.